One of the things that um, in a pre-interview we were talking about was losing money. Mm. And one of your first government contracts, you was talking about how you had a bad deal and had to pay back a million dollars, man. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that experience, man, and what was the mindset and the process that you went through having to pay back that money? Well, you know, when you first get into government contracting, um, a lot of times, I mean, just like in most business, government contracting is about relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a situation where I have, uh, it was a relationship with another government contractor that basically kind of teamed up with me on on this new contract that we had won. They had the relationship with the customer and stuff like that. So, and you need that sometimes when you're doing government contract. And, um, but yeah, man, we got into the deal and, and really I wasn't supposed to do any work on the deal, right? It was supposed to be more like in the, the term of government contract, we call it pass through. It's supposed to be like a pass through. But, uh, and, and obviously, you know, they, that company was going to make the, the, the lion's share of the money. But what happened was I ended up starting having to do a lot of work, you know, having to do a lot of work, manage the contract and things of that nature. Now, keep in mind, the money still flowed through my account. So I could have technically just said, you know what, you know, F yeah. you and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm and, and run it that way. But, you know, I'm, I'm not built like that. Right. I mean, and I remember telling my wife one day, you know, she was asking me, well, man, if, if you if the money's coming to you, why would you keep paying them their money? And you, you know, and y'all have a renegotiated deal. You ask to renegotiate and they tell, you no. and I told her strictly, I said, listen, to be honest with you, I made a bad deal. You know, so, you know, I'm, I'm of the mindset, that, you know, you know, you know, it wasn't like we had anything in writing and all that type of stuff. It was a handshake, but I made a bad deal. And so I the way I looked at it is that. I'm going to live this bad deal out, and then when, the, when that portion of the contract is over, when I could take over the contract, I would do so. And when that happened, it actually turned out to be a good thing because, you know, ultimately I ended up taking over the contract and went on to making millions and millions more. So, but it was a situation where it was, it was tough going, at, you know, when you had to cut those checks, knowing that you're doing work and ain't getting paid for it, you know, and, um, but it was just a bad deal that I made. Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't have did that, man. But I think like anytime you're in business, when you make a bad deal, because being in real estate and you do a lot of deals or being in any type of business, you're going to have some bad deals. Yes. And yeah. the thing about it is that you have to still have character within that deal and honor what you are say you're going to do. Because when you do that, one, you're better for it. But, but not only that, like you maintain your integrity. Yes. And you have to do that with business, man. Yes. And it's been plenty of times, like when I'm flipping properties where I've promised an investor a certain mm -hmm. return, I might end up breaking even on a deal, but I'm still making my investor whole because it's about the relationship and it's about the next deal. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's a bar for y'all. If y'all out yeah. there listening, man. I know uh, we're going to pivot, man. I didn't want to talk too much about government contracts, but yep. I did want to make a point that anything you're doing, there's always going to be risk. We've all have lost money. And one thing I've learned pretty early, I ain't going to say I learned it, but one thing that's been very apparent to me with starting this podcast and interviewing other successful people is that it's not how much you've made. It's not about the wins. It's about them losses and what you learn from them losses to be able to grow. Yeah. So speak about that a little bit before we make our yeah. transition, man. What is it about the losses that are needed as an entrepreneur to succeed? Because you don't learn nothing from success. And it's on you, man. I, I ain't oh, gonna, it's on me? Yeah, oh. I ain't going to cheat yeah. you, man. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's still open, though, right? The table's yeah. still open? Yes, yeah, that table okay. open. Okay. But if you think about it, I mean, what, what do you really learn from success, right? I mean, success is pretty, if you have a success all the time, it's pretty, you don't really learn nothing from it other than the fact that you say, hey, man, you know, um, oh, damn, that's what I could have gone. Other than the fact that you, you, you feel, hey, man, what, what I'm doing is working, right? You say, what I'm doing is working, and, and I'm going to keep doing that thing, right? So if, 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 so if I'm, it's just like in the game of, of football, if, I, if I'm running a certain play over and over again, I'm just going to keep running that same play because it's working. But what happens now when the defense changes on you, right? 
You only learn from the failures, man. When you start losing and taking L's, that's the only way that you lose. I mean, the only way you really learn because then you start thinking of other strategies and other ways you do things. And that's, for me, that's what happened when I'm in business. Man, when I, you know, when I started losing money and things of that nature, I started looking at other ways to make money. How can I save my money better? How can I manage my money better? I wouldn't have thought, I never thought about cash flow management if, if my business was constantly doing well all the time. I would just keep making money, spending money, making money, spending money. But when, because I started losing money, I now had to start thinking about cash flow management. How did I preserve my capital, right? You know, how do I invest it in things that can appreciate and make me more money and things of that nature? You only learn that from losing. Absolutely. You know, since COVID, you know, there have been a lot of people teaching financial literacy, teaching business, teaching a lot of different things, man. In, in your opinion, as an entrepreneur getting started, whether it's in real estate or government contracts, whatever the industry might be, mm -hmm. what's, give, me, give, me, give me three things people need to try to be self-aware of and learn out the gate to put their self on the right track in having success in, in entrepreneurship. Well, I, I think the first thing is course financial literacy and when, and when I mean by financial literacy I don't just I'm, I'm not just talking about you know just understanding you know when we think about financial literacy a lot of people just think about entrepreneurship right when I think about financial literacy I'm talking about the tactical things of financial literacy right how do I manage money right that's the first and foremost thing right and what I think is it's a three-pronged approach understanding how to sell because if you don't know how to sell then you will never make any money right and, and being an entrepreneur you got to know how to sell. It, 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 it's interesting to me how a lot of people come to me as entrepreneurs and they say I'm an entrepreneur. And the first thing they say, man, how, how do I get customers? Motherfucker, that's your job. That's what, <laughs> that's what, you, that's what, that's what you're supposed to figure out as the entrepreneur. Your job is to figure out how to get customers, right? Whether it's networking or however, look, man, however you do it, your job is to figure out how to get customers. So knowing how to sell is number one. Knowing how to manage your money is number two because when you start making money, how do I manage that money, right? And then the third thing I think is just knowing from a long-term perspective is knowing how to invest. Because it, many of us talk about investing, but I don't think most of us understand what investing is. Most of us don't really truly understand the art of investing, especially if you, if you come from a family and, and, and co uh, communities that never invested. I, I know I came from those communities that never invested. So I had to learn how to invest, where to put my money. You know, what, what is risk management when it comes to investing? You know that from being in real estate. So I think it's a three-pronged approach. I mean, knowing how to sell, knowing how to manage your money, and then knowing how to grow that money through investments.